Good morning and welcome to the Sierra Nevada, California, America. We are no longer in Bali and as you can probably tell, it's just a little bit colder here than it was in Indonesia. Anyway, today we are up for the sunrise as per usual. The sun is coming up over there and I have Sierra Nevada. I have the Sierras. I don't know what to call it, to be honest. I know Mount Whitney's in there. That's about it. Uh, and they're behind me. They are incredible. And I've been here for their last sunset, sunrise, sunset yesterday and now sunrise today because I am blown away. In Australia, this doesn't exist, mountains like this, so I am taking my time and I am soaking all of it in at once. But today, guys, I wanted to share with you three landscape, three? Th wow, my fingers are just frozen and fat, but three landscape photography tips with you guys since I am in one of the most beautiful landscapes I have been in probably in my entire life. Now these tips are going to be a little bit more nitty gritty and not just like what gear you should shoot with or try different compositions or anything like that. I'm talking about the stuff that actually matters for you guys to take better landscape photos. Okay, so landscape photography tip number one is to get to your location really early, like I'm talking nice and early and do as much research as possible. Too many times have I been bitten by getting to my spot just on time and not knowing where I wanted to shoot, what compositions I wanted to get, or anything of the sort. Or even worse, let alone missing the light completely. This is such a huge factor in landscape photography and will set apart the beginners and the professionals because the professionals know and understand, especially when going to a place they've never been before, that they have to get there early because you just don't know what to expect. Things might have changed, things might have differed from the blog post you read online. It's just really good to get there, especially if it's your first time on time or no stuff on time a whole lot earlier i'm talking a good hour or so before the sun is coming up i was up an hour before the sun came up and i slept just over there somewhere in the white van and i was out here a good 45 minutes before the sun has even thought about coming up and not only does this give me a whole bunch of time to look at compositions and find different spots but it also gives me a chance to shoot the landscape at all different hours i'm talking blue hour golden hour and normal sunlight you don't want to miss any of those because i can tell you right Right now, the Sierras behind me are stunning in all of the lights. At the moment, it's still a little bit blue hourish, but as soon as that red light begins to hit those peaks, I'm telling you, it is something amazing. And if I were to miss that yesterday or miss that today, I would have been absolutely devastated, or I wouldn't have been because I wouldn't know what I was missing out on. <music> As you can see, the sun is well and truly coming up. It hasn't come onto us yet, but it is on those peaks. And that red, when it first hits, is just insane. You guys would have seen the photos. I am just, yeah, it was the same conditions yesterday. And honestly, it doesn't get better, I swear. But anyway, tip number two for landscape photography. And as you might see, it is getting a little bit warmer. My hands are out of my gloves and I've dropped a hood. But tip number two is to shoot with different focal lengths. Right now, I've got a 16 to 35 on, which is an absolute staple landscape lens. Yet everything I shot here was shot on the 100 to 400. And in all honesty, I don't like any of the photos coming from the 16 to 35. I absolutely love being able to like push in, snipe and just, and just take a small part of a huge landscape and really just highlight that one specific area. Now I'm not saying do this for every landscape by any means, but use different focal lengths and you're gonna be blown away with the type of results you'll get. Not only does this open up doors for different compositions, but it also opens up doors for unique compositions. A lot of the times you'll get to a very popular Instagram spot and there will be the one two or maybe three photos that everyone takes but if you're there shooting a super wide landscape with a 100 to 400 at like between 300 to 400 millimeters you're probably getting shots that not many other people have got and that way you can ensure you're going to be getting something you're going home that you're happy with and not just the same wide shot that everyone else has already taken <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, that is the sunrise over and done with. And yes, I got the drone up for one cheeky little shot. It was rude not to, honestly. It is way too beautiful here to let a moment like that pass. But moving on to tip number three, last but not least, and that is to shoot regardless of the conditions. Now, I'm not saying if there's thunder and lightning outside and it's pouring down rain that you should go and try and shoot beach landscapes. Or, or maybe you should. I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe you can get some insane lightning shots striking the top of a lighthouse or something of the sort. But nonetheless, shoot in nearly all conditions. This is going to push you as a landscape photographer, not only because you're going to learn how to shoot in rain, hail, or literally shine, but it's also going to push you to get out of bed, to get out of the car, to go on that hike while the conditions aren't too good. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen rain, bad weather, thick cloud, whatever, you name it, over any kind of landscape that I've wanted to go and shoot, but I've pushed through and I've got some incredible results. The latest one was when I was back in Bali and I took this shot. When I left that morning, it was raining, it was really thick cloud and I couldn't see any mountains from where I lived, even though we had a nice high rooftop to basically check for conditions. So what I'm saying is don't be a snob when it comes to conditions. Try and shoot anyway because you just might get surprised of what you get. And if not, it's going to push you, it'll teach you, and you'll grow and learn from shooting in bad weather conditions. So anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was fairly short and quick, but in all honesty, I think you guys like these videos and I really enjoy making them. They don't take days on end even though I do enjoy making those kind of videos but these ones are just great to sit down punch out some value and deliver the content that you guys want to see but anyway guys thank you so much for watching I hope you have enjoyed and I hope you've been able to take something from what we've spoken about today learn something and put it into your photography for the next time you go out to shoot I'm going to be out here in America for the next two to two and a half weeks shooting so I'm going to be filming a whole lot of YouTube videos so get ready for that guys yes it's going to be a little bit tough to find time to edit and put these out so I'm still going to have some barley content on the way but by the time you're seeing this I'm probably wrapping up my time in America and uh, yeah unfortunately that's just how the cookie crumbles but anyway guys I'm gonna call it a day there if you have enjoyed let me know down below by leaving a like or a comment subscribe if you are new and guys as always I will catch you in the next one peace